Hello and welcome to the Essence of Knowledge meeting, which is for the participants of the Essence of Knowledge program. Neelam is asking, I was pondering that if the body-mind is illusory, then actions or karma done by the individual are also illusory. Still, why is it recommended for the individual or body-mind to do good karma like serving others, etc.? Very good question. It is for the benefit of the individual. There is no uh, relation to knowledge or absolute knowledge. Even if you do something good, it will remain illusory. It is recommended for the benefit of the individual, for the uh, benefit of the body-mind. Why? Because there is a law, the karmic law. If you do good, there is a good possibility that the fruits will be or the consequences will be good. I am not saying 100% no. It is. It must be your own experience. If you do something good, it is not guaranteed. The fruits are not guaranteed. You have a lot of control over your action, but only a little bit of control over the consequences. So, what is recommended? Consequences cannot be controlled, but at least you can control your actions. That will have a good effect on the individual and the effect is usually happiness, peace and satisfaction, uh, freedom. That is what this individual wants. I don't think that the individual wants knowledge because knowledge means end of the individual. End does not mean death, but it is conceptual, end of the concept of the individual. I don't think any individual wants that, my end. No, it wants happiness and freedom. One way to achieve this goal is through knowledge. And the knowledge says that, yes, all actions are illusory. Don't worry about it. Do that which is necessary. Find out what is good for you, what is bad for you. Do it. Anyway, you won't be able to control the consequences. But in a practical way, the Guru, due to his kindness, drops down into ignorance and recommends some kind of actions which are good for the individual. You can call it ethical behavior. But ethical, the word ethics is very loaded. It is corrupt. It is mostly political in nature. So, we don't use ethical, this word, ethical actions. Everybody has their own. Every country, every time, every individual has their own ethics. It is meaningless. So, instead we use uh, good karma, good actions, bad actions. What is good? That which is good for everybody. And this is the point of view of path of knowledge. I was talking about non-violence. What is good for everybody? Non-violence. Non-violence means not causing any kind of harm to anything. Things, uh, plants, trees, animals, people, higher than people, higher than humans. Nobody should be harmed. This is the universal ethical law and it is the karmic law. If you follow this, because this is natural, we call it the law of the mind, law of the memory. If you walk on this natural path, there are good effects of it purely for practical purposes. Good effect. The flow of the universal mind is towards non-violence. It is trying to create, it is trying to maintain and it is trying to destroy everything that is unwholesome. It is trying to get rid of all the impurities and all. This is called the energy of evolution. Things are evolving. This is the direction of the flow. And if you go with this flow, your life or the life of the individual becomes pleasant. This journey of evolution becomes pleasant journey. There are no obstacles. Although it is all happening in illusion. So it is recommended. And it is also recommended, do not mix truth with the false. What is the truth? It is all illusion. What is the practical? You need to do something which is beneficial for everybody. Not only for you, yes you also. Everybody includes you also. But uh, for a practical life some do's and don'ts are there on the path of knowledge it is left to the individual act from your knowledge this is the teaching so hopefully it is clear find out your good and bad do it if it is in line in flow with the universe there will be good effects probably may not be short term but long term you should see long term because you know that you are timeless no beginning no end so obviously, if you act from this knowledge, 
you will think about long term those who don't have knowledge ignorant people they think short term what can i get that is good for me so we need to leave this short term thing find out what is good for you and yes if in doubt always consult your guru the guru will not stop you from doing the guru will only tell you the consequences because at the level of the illusion the will of the individual is highest we regard the will of the individual as the highest free will so the guru will never stop you from doing something bad the guru will give you a warning if you do this this can happen he will always say can happen he will never say will happen because who knows what will happen nobody so always consult your guru do that which you want to because even if nothing good happens there will be a teaching there will be learning there will be a lesson so for a seeker there are no good consequences there are no bad consequences there is always a lesson whatever you do you will get a lesson this is guaranteed this is also my experience my individual experience if you are on a path all actions will bring lessons that is how you will progress that is why you progress so fast harish is asking a question came to mind how does the buddhist concept of nirvana be explained by our pok glossary as non existence and is that something even possible if there is one timeless eternal experience or who or what is non existence existent very good question usually we do not mix uh, the parts but uh, nirvana itself is defined as non existence yes and it is the removal or ceasing of that which was assumed to exist now you you are asking me to interpret it to convert it into our terminology that is what i am doing probably probably it is right probably it is wrong only buddhist can tell so according to my understanding that which was assumed to exist will be gone that is nirvana what is assumed to exist the world the individual the body mind or the mental concept of a person you need to extinguish all these things it's gone it takes it does not take time as you know so what remains not non existence emptiness remains emptiness nirvana is returning to emptiness returning to a place of uh, no knowledge no ignorance it is possible now at this very moment nirvana is possible yes everything that appears will continue to appear that is not our uh, headache that is not our problem because that which appears is also emptiness it is also non existent if you want to use the word non existent for emptiness there is never non existence but there is always emptiness uh, in our terminology we'll say knowledge is nirvana knowledge of who you are what you are immediately gives you nirvana yes if you ask somebody who is in buddhism jainism some other place some other philosophy they will tell you in a different way there will be different words different understanding so take whatever is useful for you